Hello everyone. When I was 12, a close relative came home. And while we were at dinner, she told my mom that I was fat. It was like a death sentence, just like the end of the world. For me, fat meant being sloppy, being lazy, being clumsy and above all ugly. I thought I couldn't make friends if I was fat. I thought boys wouldn't look at me. I went on a crash diet. I started a workout schedule and also ended up being in a hospital. I weighed myself on a weighing scale twice a day. When my friends went for dancing and swimming classes, I stayed home like a wet blanket. When my friends ate burgers and chips, I didn't even give a second look to the amazing cakes my grandmother baked at home or the lovely Belgian chocolates my aunt got for me from overseas. How dumb can I be? Seriously people, sometimes I wonder whether adults do more harm than good to children. As children we are told we are either too fat or we are too thin, either we are too dark or we are too fair, or either we our teeth are crooked or our nose is crooked. We carry these insecurities, perhaps till our last breath. We carry this shame, the shame of being too fat or being too thin. We carry perhaps the shame on a birthday, when we cut the birthday cake and we refuse to smile with the teeth shown because someone told us our teeth was crooked. Sometimes we carry the shame of being fat when we take a holiday at Bali and when we choose to stay like a wet blanket in a room rather than be on the beach wearing a swimsuit. Research shows that 90% of women are unhappy with their bodies. Thanks for the countless social media posts and the Instagram stories. The myth of the perfect flawless body is driving women crazy. It affects them physically as well as mentally. Liquid diets, the countless exercises, botox, breast implants, facelifts, you name it, the glutathione shots. The surgical age definition of female health is not healthy. In 1985, Eugenia Chandras in the Venus syndrome describe big hips and thighs as a medical problem. During the past decade, women have reached a power structure. More women have more power and more money. But what we think about ourselves physically might be worse off than our unliberated grandmothers. It took me actually five long years to forget, not to forget, to understand that I was not fat. And it took me another five years to know that fat was not ugly. And another long, long 10 years to realize that life and love is not based on looks. Let me ask you guys something. How many of us are comfortable in our own skins? How many of us can look into the mirror and really say that we really like the reflection what we see? How many of us, of us would like to fix something? Don't we like to fix our stretch marks, the big hips or the thighs, the ugly veins on our thighs, the little paunch which appears when we are 40? Or do we have to fix our mindset or the perspective or our thinking? There are a lot of friends of mine who take glutathione shots to make their skin look brighter. I think that's absolutely okay, it's up to them. But a lot of people who think that it's tragic to have cellulite on their body. A lot of people also think it's tragic to have their tummies hanging loose. But let me tell you people, I think perhaps tragedy is not having enough 
sh food, shelter and home and not having cellulite on your body. Well, does body positivity or being comfortable in your own skin means not to take care of our body? Or being in your pyjamas 24-7 or not brushing your hair? Women slog it out 24-7, raising their children, looking after their elderly parents, cooking for their family, trying to balance between the career and home. But at the same time, feeling guilty for taking the time out for themselves. I think there is some kind of maternal ideal of being self-sacrificing, which denies women to take time for themselves. Now, I'm going to tell you a few tips on how to look a little bit extra. Let's start with health. I think I don't have to go into detail about health because it goes without saying, you know, how health is important for your looks. But of course, I have to emphasize on personal hygiene. That is keeping your eyes, teeth and hair clean. It's very important that we maintain personal hygiene before looking good. To brush our teeth like at least twice a day, to shower twice a day and of course to apply some cologne or deodorant. Nobody likes to sweat, nobody likes to smell bad, do we? A hairstyle can actually make or break your look. So it's always advisable to ask somebody, especially to an expert, on how to cut your hair. I really don't know why we Keralites or South Indians have got this thing about like uh, applying oil, yeah, you know, keeping the oil on our head even after we take a shower. There's nothing wrong with it, but of course it looks a bit shabby. Having said that, it's always ideal to use a hair serum rather than oil. A hair serum takes care of your flyaways. At the same time, it doesn't make your hair look greasy. Now, what about your skin? Make sure that you keep your skin hydrated and moisturized. Now, I'll tell you a small tip to make your skin look better. When you moisturize it, please use a little bit of highlighter, not only in your face. All women make sure that, you know, their face looks good. But what about their hands and their legs? A lot of attention goes to your hands and legs. We use hands a lot, don't we? So make sure your hands also look clean and moisturized as well. And we all have this habit of wearing ankle length pants, don't we? With the salwa kameez. When you wear your ankle length pants, make sure your feet is done. What I mean by doing your feet is keep your feet clean. If you don't apply your nail polish, it's absolutely okay. But make sure your nails are kept trimmed and clean. Having spoken about hair and skin, let me go to clothes. Never wear undersized or oversized clothes. The best thing is to try your, your dress when you go to the showroom. People, it's not always necessary. You have to go with a trend. Just because it's trending doesn't mean it has to suit you. So just wear what suits you. Speaking about accessories, please do not over accessorize. You don't have to wear a jumka and a choker together. You can either have a book jumka or a choker. It looks polished. Now, you don't need anybody's validation or anyone's acceptance, but it's always good to dress up because it increases your self-confidence and your self-esteem. It's absolutely okay to be not to be okay and keep your peace and happiness before the rest of the world. Thank you.